Hey there, Python trainer Ruben Lerner here. And today I want to show you the six most important arguments that you're going to want to pass to read CSV when reading CSV files into a pandas data frame. So first of all, what is CSV? So it's comma separated values, or if you prefer character separated values. And the basic idea is you have a bunch of records and the records, the records are divided into fields. So how can you take that sort of data and pass it around in some sort of useful format? So CSV, in CSV, we have a text file, and basically every line in the file is a record, and fields on each line are separated by commas. So for example, you know, a, a file could look like this. I'm just going to put it here and mark down. It's going to be like A comma B comma C, D comma E comma F. That is like the simplest possible definition of CSV. And if I say import pandas as PD, and then I say, hey, give me the help on PD read CSV. That's the function that we're going to want to use, CSV, if I can type it today. And if I ask for the help, I'm going to find out what all the different options are. Good news and bad news. The good news is that CSV is so um, loosely defined that pandas is going to need to work hard and have lots of options in order to handle it. And it has lots of options. Actually, that's both the good news and the bad news. There are oodles and oodles of options to read CSV to handle all the different variations of CSV that are out there. The good news, and what I'm going to try to get across in this video as quickly as possible, although it's going to be a little long, I must admit, is what are the arguments that you most often are going to have to pass in order to work with CSV files? So let's start with, you know, argument one, and that's going to be the file name or file spec. Now, already that sounds like Duh, if I'm going to read a file, then I better have a file name. But the first argument can be a string describing a file. It can be a file-like object, as we like to call it in the Python world, with a file open for reading already. Or it can even be a URL in a string. Pretty amazing, right? I'm going to show you all of these. It's not that hard to work with this. Now, I'm going to use one of my favorite files and that's taxi.csv. So I'm going to say here, df equals pd read csv of taxi.csv. So here you can see I'm passing a string. The string is clearly a file name. I will pass that string to read csv. It will see that it's a file name. It will load up that file as best as it can, and it'll stick it into df, which is the data frame. And now if I say df.head, we're going to see that indeed it read it just fine. And that's because basically this is the perfect easy file for read csv. So by default, right, it assumes that there is a line of headers at the top of the file naming the columns, and it assumes that fields are separated by commas. All right, we are going to mess with all of these things over the next little while. But basically, this is what read CSV assumes, and it does that. Well, what happens, right? What if I give it a URL rather than a string? And actually, that's pretty common. So I'm just going to head over here to my other screen. And I have here, I stuck it into a gist on GitHub. And this is just like Apple stock prices from, I don't know, a while back. I don't know, maybe it's not even such a while back. Oh, it's actually until pretty recently. Yay me. So if I now look at this in raw format on the gist, just so I can get it in really, truly raw CSV file format. Uh, okay, it's not going to like that so much. Let's see if I can do raw here. Oh, I just had to click on it. Ah, what do you know? You have to click on a file in order for it to uh, appear. So I'm now going to take this awful, awful URL, and I'm going to say here URL equals. I'm going to stick that in, right? So now I've got this really, really long, awful URL, but Pandas doesn't care. Now I can say df equals pd read CSV. And look at this. I'm going to stick in URL, which is a string, but Pandas recognizes that the string begins with HTTPS, and it will download it from the internet and stick it into a data frame. And now I say df.head. And look at that. Now I get all those lines with Apple stock prices from the last few years. Pretty snazzy. And you can actually do this with any of the read methods or functions in Pandas. If you're reading in data, you can give it a string, and that string will automatically be detected as either a file name or a URL. Okay, that's argument number one. Argument number two is set. And so basically, the assumption is that your separator will be comma, right? What if it isn't, 
right? Then you can pass any string, usually one character long, to set. And that will be used to separate the values. Now I happen to have a file here that I created to play with this. So I'm going to say here, file name equals, and I called it mydata3.csv because I'm super, super creative. And now if I say df equals pd read csv, uh, let me just uh, do something here with that file. There we go. Okay, and I'm going to read it in, and I'll say here a file name. And look at this. I say df.head, and ugh. And you can pretty quickly and easily see when you have not used Seth correctly because you get one long column with the same character again and again and again. Something is wrong there, right? Yeah, I think so. So I'm going to say, again, I'm going to say df equals pd read csv. I'm going to say file name. And I'm going to say Seth equals, or not like that, Seth equals, and it's just a string, which happens to be a semicolon. And I do that and I say df. Look at that. Beautiful, right? So set can, again, be any character. It's pretty typical to use comma. It's also typical to use tabs. I actually am a big fan of tabs, um, but they're invisible, so I didn't want to use them here. Co uh, um, uh, semicolons, colons, all sorts of things. As long as it's a, not a new line character, you can use it, and someone out there is probably using it. Okay, let's move on now to argument number three, which is use calls. So you normally don't want to read all of the columns in from a data file. You want to save memory and processing time by selecting only a few of those columns. And so you can do that with use calls. Just pass it a list of the columns you want to use. I'm going to go back to my taxi file for now. So I'm going to say df equals pd read csv. I'm going to say here file, well, actually, I can say, say taxi.csv. And then I'm going to say use calls equals, and I'm going to say here passenger count, trip distance, and total amount. Now, where are these names coming from? These names are coming from that first line, that first row of headers that gave each of our columns their names when we read in the data frame earlier. So I know what the names are, and I know what I want to grab from there. And sure enough, if now I say DF head, Oops, except that it didn't actually work because I didn't close things correctly. <laughs> but now that I did, it works just fine. And this saves a ton of memory. It also just allows you to think in better terms about your data because you're only looking at particular columns. You're not worried about all these columns that really have nothing to do with it. Now, if you're not really sure which columns you're going to want, you will have to read them all in, right? And then what you can do is you can say, okay, I'm just going to read this whole thing in. And then I can say df.columns, and I'll take a look at what all the columns are, and they'll be like, oh, I want this one, I want that one. Now, this is one way for us to read in the columns. Another way is for me to count them. So passenger count is 0, 1, 2, 3. I can just use the numbers. All right, and then we've got 4, trip distance. Then we're going to have 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And now if I read those in, we get exactly the same columns, but I've used the numbers instead. Why would I want to use the numbers? Maybe I want to make my code unreadable for my colleagues. All right, that's not really a good reason. Um, and you'll see in just a moment, there are times when we don't know the names of the columns, and then we would have to use that. But most of the time, I actually prefer to use the names if I can. Okay, next one. Argument four is index call. And so if we already know what column or even multiple columns we want to use as the index in our data frame. We can specify that when we read the CSV file into memory. So I can say here df equals pd read CSV and I can say taxi.csv and I'll even say here use calls. Oops, I should probably put that into a Python cell, right? So and then I'll say here use calls equals and I'll use my favorite, uh, let's do pep pick up date time and I'll say passenger count and we'll say here total amount and we'll say what else was there the trip distance those are my favorites and then I can say here index call equals and then I can give it a string let's say tpep pick up date time and if I do that if I now look at my header or if I look at the head of my data frame look at this now tpep pick up date time has been set to be my index I could have done this in two steps I could have read in the data frame and then called set index. This is just, I think, a little cleaner, a little nicer, a little easier. By the way, if I want to, 
right? Instead of passing a single string, I can pass a list of strings, and then we will have a multi-indexed data frame. So watch this, I can now say, and this is completely nonsensical, so please don't do this, but I can say your index call equals tpet pickup date time and then passenger count. And now if I say df head, look at this, I have my multi-index by both pickup date time and passenger count, and I have only two regular value columns. And I actually do this all the time. Note, the columns that you name in index call must be referenced in the use calls. You, they must be read in, otherwise, like, you can imagine it's not going to work so well. Okay, next up, argument five, header. So, most CSV files tend to have um, uh, the names of the columns on the first row of the file. That's just from my experience. However, some files have junk before the headers which we want to ignore. And some files don't have headers at all. We can handle both of these situations with header. So how's that gonna work? So I'm just gonna load up one of my other files here that I created. Uh, yeah, let's do mydata.csv. So I'm gonna say here, df equals pd read csv of mydata.csv. And now I look at df. Oh, it doesn't like this. I can't even look at DF because the parsing failed. And why did the parsing fail? Well, Pandas here is going to like spill its guts telling us everything that went wrong. But it basically is saying, error tokenizing data, expected one field of line three, saw four. What? What? What are you talking about? Like, what, what is going on here? Well, if I look at the file now, right, mydata.csv, you're going to see that it thought that there was like one field here because there was no comma. So one field here and one field here, so far so good. And then wait, 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 there are four fields. Oh, so I need to tell, tell pandas to ignore all of the lines until line zero, one, two. So meaning headers are on line two. And now if I say df equals pd read csv of, and I say here, my data csv, and then I say, let's pull this up a little, header equals two. Oh, uh -huh. now it's much better, right? Because it ignored the first two lines that were just text, junk. And then it said, okay, line two, we're going to handle as headers, and then we'll use the rest as data. And this is, again, very, very common to have to do. But wait a second, what if there are no headers at all? Right, that's, that's, that's a different sort of situation. So I'm going to actually read in, I'm going to say here, df equals pd read csv of my data 2csv Actually, let's just take a look at it first head of my data 2csv And you're going to see there's some junk, and then there's some more junk. And then, oh, well, this is kind of bad, right? Like, we don't really have anything here. Ugh. So, uh, but we're going to have to do here is we have to do a little bit of surgery, right? So I'm going to have to say here, pd read csv. And I'm going to say here, my data 2csv. Say header equals none. Well, and then it's going to have that parsing error. So now I'm going to have to say here, skip lines. Let's just do this here. Do, 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 do. Help on PD read CSV. Ah, start with. Okay, let's just do here. Let's look here for a moment. Skip rows. Skip rows. We're just going to say there is no header, and you should not look at those first two rows. So I'm going to say here, DF equals PD read CSV. I'm going to say here my data two dot or my yeah my data two dot csv, and then I'm going to say here header equals none, and then I'm going to say here skip rows equals two. Well, it seems quiet. It seems happy. Df head. Look at that. Well, wait a second. There is a bit of a problem there, right? You see the problem? Let me just get rid of this here. So you see the problem is now that our headers our, our columns don't have any names at all. Hmm. It's better than having it's better than having an error. But now, how can I give them names? Well, good news. Argument number six is names, and we can tell pandas what names to use when we're reading in a file uh, if the file doesn't provide any headers itself. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say df equals pd read csv. I'm going to say here my data 2csv 
And I'm going to say your header equals none because there are no headers there. I'm going to say skip rows equals two. And then I can say here names equals, and I'm just going to call it A and B and C and D because I'm really boring. And then we look at DF and look at that. Now we have those columns and we have them named and all is good. But wait a second. What if I want to read in columns A, B, and D, skipping C, and I want column A, let's get rid of this fine thing, sorry, it's annoying me. All right, I don't know if that's really getting rid of it, fine. And I want column A to be the index. Well, now we can bring together everything we've seen so far. BF equals PD read CSV. And we're gonna say my data two dot CSV. And we're gonna say header equals none. And we're gonna say skip rows equals two. And we're gonna say use calls equals, and here I have to use numbers, right? So I'm gonna say here zero, one, uh, uh, zero, one, and three. And then I'm gonna say here names equals, I'm gonna call them A and B and D just to be consistent. And then I'm gonna say index call equals, and we can use a number or we can use a name. Let's try using a name and see if it works. Seems pretty happy. Look at that. I now have columns B and D. Column A is our index, and we win. And we used all of the different things, I think, that I introduced to you today. Oh, I guess except for Seth. Anyway, these options, these arguments to uh, uh, read CSV, they happen all the time. Just about every time I'm reading a CSV file, I need one or more of these. And mixing and matching them together, you can see it's like magic. All right. Give me your comments, give me your questions, tell me what you want to learn about Python and pandas, and I will be back soon with way more information for you. Uh, I'll be back real soon. See you then.